things to talk about. These sort of uh, you know, talks on basic mechanisms of tolerance can go on for hours. Um, so I think what we probably do is uh, talk about what we mean by tolerance in general terms, then some of the mechanisms, um, and discuss then regulatory T cells, which of course have been the subject of huge interest in the literature, um, and talk maybe a little bit about how some of these things can potentially be used as novel therapeutics for patients. Now, um, no talk on tolerance, particularly its definition, would be, would be complete uh, without reference uh, to this man. So this is Peter Medua, um, who was one of the first people, one of the founding fathers of immunology, and one of the first to really describe this phenomenon of immunological tolerance. And to use his words uh, from his Nobel lecture in 1960, uh, immunological tolerance can be described as a state of indifference or non-reactivity towards a substance that would normally be expected to elicit an immunological response. Um, and one of the, the key parts of that definition can be distilled to selective unresponsiveness of the immune system to specific antigens. And that distinguishes it really from a situation where you have an absence of an immune response, where the individual would not respond to multiple pathogens, uh, multiple antigens, uh, per se. Now, I quite like to start this by going through some of the historical perspective um, on tolerance. So this is a, this is a chap, uh, Rady Owen, in 1945, and I think he was at the University of Wisconsin. And he made a very seminal observation. Um, these are free martin cattle, uh, which are dizygotic. Now, dizygotic cattle very frequently share a common placenta. And in fact, they make multiple anastomoses there. Uh, what he found was that these cattle, although they were genetically disparate, so they were MHC incompatible to each other, were born with and retained a stable mixture of cells from the other one. Um, the, you could, uh, the easiest way to demonstrate this, really, is if one is male and the other is female, you'll be able to find female cells in the male that persist throughout life. Um, and what he actually did was he looked at red cells um, and he postulated that red blood cell precursors go across the placenta and are retained by the recipient, allowing the recipient to effectively become chimeric. Um, this observation generated a very testable hypothesis. Okay, let's say that that is the case. This argues that the recipient's system, immune system, is now tolerant to the alloantigens of the twin. So, Medua and Billingham uh, won the Nobel Prize really for, for two sets of experiments, as well as multiple other contributions to immunology. Um, and what they did was they took those dizygotic cattle. Um, uh, this one had a red cell of type 1, this one had red blood cells of type 2, and they showed that you could take skin from either twin, put it on the other one, and it would be stably reti retained. While at the same time, both were able to reject skin grafts from a third party. So they had acquired a state of tolerance specifically to their twin cells. And that was presumably due to transfer of something across that placenta um, in, uh, in utero. These observations were then extended to a series of very beautiful experiments. So here's a simple mouse experiment. We've all seen this many times. You take a piece of